Welcome back everyone to teach the series on fluency. In this video, I'm going to discuss another industrial example and I'll show you how you can design a pneumatic circuit with fluid seam for this specific application. Without further ado, let's focus on the example. So I picked this example from a pneumatic basic level, the textbook written by Festo. So the example says we have a double acting cylinder which is used for pressing parts and once a push button is operated the clamping cylinder slowly advances. So we have a few important information in the first two sentences here. The first thing is we have a double acting cylinder, right? The second important information here we have a push button which means we would have a directional control valve right and that directional control valve is configured with a uh, basically a push button and in the other side probably we need to have a spring return and the clamping cylinder slowly advances which means in this specific circuit we would have a throttle check valve to have control basically uh, over the speed of the double acting cylinder now it says once the fully extended position is reached the cylinder is to remain for a few seconds in the fully extended position so this sentence is pretty much clear which means when we reach to that fully extended position when the piston is in that specific condition we would have a certain amount of delay right and from there easily we can understand okay this circuit needs to use time delay valve right we have to put the time delay valve inside this circuit and so it says it stays there for a few seconds in the fully extended position and retract to its initial position and here we have another important sentence a new cycle as you see in here is only possible after the cylinder has fully retracted and after a few seconds of delay so we would have like the possibility of a new cycle for this system considering two important conditions. The first one is the system should be in their fully retracted position and we should pass a certain amount of delay again in order to be ready for the next basically cycle. And then we would have another explanation here, which is a nice explanation. It says this delay is used for manual removing of the finished part and replacing it with a new part basically for pressing. The retracting speed is to be rapid but adjustable. So this is the reason behind having this delay within this pneumatic circuit. And the last sentence giving us another important information which means we need to have a throttle check valve again for controlling the speed of the system right for the retraction so if you look at this problem statement we can easily say how many different components we need for here we need to have a double acting cylinder definitely right we need to have a directional control valve uh, and that directional control valve is going to be operated by a push button and a spring return and we need to have throttle check valves right for both retractions and advancing so two throttle check valves and we need to have two time delay valves too right and another important thing that we have to consider for this specific circuit is the twin pressure valve because when we want to check the system for starting the new cycle right if that like one side is in true condition basically coming from the position that we have right the other side which is the push button right would have the chance of starting the position starting the cycle so that's why we need to have a twin pressure valve here for checking that condition and ensuring that we are ready for the new cycle okay so that is what we have for this problem statement in the next part of this video i'll show you how you can design fluid sim to design uh, basically the pneumatic circuits needed for this specific application. Okay, for the circuit that we discussed, basically for the example that I showed you guys, 
we need a few important components to be uh, used and those components are basically double acting cylinder so we need to go to the actuators choose the double acting cylinder as the problem states we need to have speed control right over the retraction and advancing for the advancing we have a slow speed and for retraction we have a fast speed we need to put throttle check valve there so from flow control valve i'm bringing one uh, throttle check valve and then rotating it 180 degree and using two of them so that is going to be located here and that is going to be the other one so connecting it here connecting to the exhaust side okay so this is the double acting cylinder two throttle check valves and then we need to have directional control valve with five ports which is configurable as you can see this one and that is going to be connected to the throttle check valve and this side going to be connected to the second throttle check valve and we have to configure this both sides are going to be pneumatically actuated so i'm going to put pneumatic actuation for this the left side and right side and also we need to have a twin pressure valve so for twin pressure valve we have to go to the flow control valve that is going to be located here and then connecting to this side and the problem states the start of the new cycle right uh, is with a push button so we have a directional control valve for this specific functionality directional control valve and that directional control valve is going to be connected to the one side of the uh, one inlet of the twin pressure valve and I'm going to use uh, manual push button basically and a spring return and head OK and the other side we need to have a time delay valve because the problem is states when we have the retraction we should wait we basically we should delay for a few seconds right because during that delay the parts are going to be uh, removed and another part a new part is going to be located there so we need to basically uh, bring time delay valve and that is going to be located here and that is going to be connected to the twin pressure valve that we have and also we need another directional control valve but this one is going to be mechanically actuated to uh, the position of piston within the uh, double acting cylinder okay so that is the other important component that we need here and i have to configure it with mechanical actuations so i'm going to remove this one putting mechanical actuation roller level valve with spring return so everything for this side is okay for the advancing side we need to have another time delay valve because when it reaches to the fully advanced position it stays there for a few seconds based on the uh, problem statement so we need another time delay valve and that is going to be connected to this directional control valve in here and we need another directional control valve with mechanical actuation which is going to be linked to the position of piston within the double acting cylinder so connecting this one here and we also need to put the exhaust for each of them right so that is going to be terminator here terminator the other one head okay we need a terminator for this one too another terminator another one here okay so these are 
the components that we need also we need to have air supply right air supply air service unit and the manifold so inside the supply elements i'm going to bring all those components here so that is the air service unit and the manifold right so and then we need to connect them all uh, these components to basically this manifold so that is going to be connected here so that is the first one the second one right and the third one and this is going to be connected here the third component so these are all of these components connected and we also need to connect here to the manifold right and the very last port that should be connected we have all connection ready it's time to put the labels for each of the uh, components that we have here so this is going to be called 0z this one is going to be called 1s1 this is 1s2 and this is 1s3 right so all these components are labeled here i'm going to put 1v1 this is 1v2 here 1v3 one v four one v five and one v six and for the actuators we need to put the double acting cylinder name there so that is going to be one a hit ok so all these components have their labels it's time to link the position of piston with the corresponding directional control valves so this one uh, the actuating labels 1s2 is going to be connected to the starting position which is 0 and 1s3 is going to be connected to 100 millimeters and head okay right this is now linked to this position right now let's start the simulation to see how it behave one thing that we have to apply right now i didn't apply the time delay so let's just change a bit the capacity of the reservoir if you are interested to see how time delay valve works i suggest you guys to watch our video on time delay valve but in order to change basically the, the time delay i'm going to change the volume of the reservoir that we have in here to 0.3 and this one to 0.3 so if you increase this value basically you're increasing the amount of delay that you apply to this uh, system and hit OK. Now, if we start the simulation, see it is taking a bit time for this one to be in the operation mode. Now we have the airflow here, this stream pressure valve is ready. If I push this one, right? If I push this, we will see the system starts operating reaching to the fully advanced position now it takes a bit and then it retracts and now you see after a few seconds this is ready for the startup new cycle so let me start again reaching there 
and returning back. The problem was saying uh, we need to basically have control over the speed of the piston, right? And one side is going to have a slower motion. In order to do that, we need to basically change the opening level here. So let me change the opening level of this one to, uh, let's say, 10 and hit OK. Let's see how it basically affects the behavior of this system if we change that opening level. If I start the simulation again, see, we had a pretty much a slower motion. If I change it further, let me change it to one. And then I start the simulation. You see, we have a very slow motion towards basically fully advancing position. When we reach there, we have a time delay, but we have a very fast advancing still because we don't change this opening level in this side. Therefore, the advancing is going to be a steel with a good amount of speed. Okay, very good. So this is what we basically had for this example. We used twin pressure valve, different forms of directional control valves, throttle check valves, and we saw how we can connect the position of pistons within a double acting cylinder with different uh, directional control valves that we have within a pneumatic circuit. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed and learned how to design a pneumatic circuit based on a given problem. If you enjoyed and learned uh, designing pneumatic circuits, please subscribe our channel.